Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. You all know what day it is, can you guess? I mean, I'm sure you probably already know. You already saw the thumbnail and you already saw the title. It's a spalier day today and I am so happy about that because I've been living in this house for about six weeks now without an espalier and I am getting the itch. I need an espalier in my life. It's just one of my favorite things to have in a garden or to have on your house. I just, I just think it's so pretty. It is just the prettiest thing. It's one of the first things I did on my last property when we moved there and I just loved it so, so much. So I'm very excited to get this espalier up and going. It is this big white wall that is blinding, which is why I have my sunglasses today because I know I'm going to be blinded all day today from the reflection from this white wall. It's just, it's just calling for it. And I've showed you all, I have my star jasmine. I've decided to do a star jasmine espalier right here, which I think is going to be really, really pretty. When it comes to deciding which type of plant you want to use for your espalier, there are a lot of factors that you have to think about, but there's so many to choose from. It's kind of just what you want. It's what you want in your spot. First of all, you have to think about your zone, of course, right? And then you have to think about which way the wall is facing. So this wall is facing east, so it gets morning sun. It doesn't get the hot afternoon sun, but it still is full sun because there's nothing around it that's kind of shading it. So I needed a full, a plant that could handle some full sun. Then the other thing you want to think of is you want to think of um, how much work you're willing to put into maintaining this espalier. So in my last property, I had my English ivy espalier on the front of my house, and that one took so much work. It was beautiful. I mean, it was the prettiest thing. I don't regret it at all, but it took, it, I, every week I had to go out there and I had to kind of trim it a little bit. It only took me like five minutes to trim it, if that, but I had to go out there and trim it every single week. And if I let it go for two or three weeks, I had to deal with the consequences, right? Then I had my honeysuckle espalier, which was a little bit better. It didn't grow quite as fast, but it still did grow and I still had to maintain it, I don't know, once a month maybe, right? If that. Then on the back of my house, I had my bougainvillea espalier and that really wasn't an espalier because I, you know, I put the wire up the way that I would with a regular espalier, but I didn't train the bougainvillea and that made it so that I only had to manage it about once or twice a year, if that, right? It was really, really easy. So you kind of just have to think how much work you're willing to put in and that depends on which plant you choose. But kind of think about that the opposite way. If you choose a plant that doesn't take a lot of work, that plant is also going to be very slow growing and you're not going to get the results of your espalier for a couple years. Even the English Ivy espalier took me about a year and a half to get it to grow up to the very top and look like an espalier. So that was a year and a half. I had to be patient and I had to wait for it to grow. If you choose a plant like a climbing rose or like a fruit tree, you have to be super, super patient, right? You're only gonna have to maintain those a couple times a year, which is fabulous, but you're gonna have to wait a couple years for your espalier to start taking shape. So it kind of just depends how much work you're willing to put in, how patient you are, and then of course, sun and weather and zone and all that, all that other stuff. But there are so many good options. Honeysuckle, star jasmine, bougainvillea, climbing rose, fruit tree, creeping fig, I mean, ivy, the, it, the list just goes on and on and on, right? And you just have to look for a vining climbing plant and you can pretty much do an espalier on all of that. It just, it just depends on how much work you wanna put in. So I've showed you these before. These are the star jasmine that I found when I went plant shopping with my mom just the other day. And it was such a score. These are so big. So star jasmine, you kind of have to think about star jasmine. They are the same, the type of plant that's going to sleep, creep, and leap, right? The first year it's going to sleep and it's going to seem like it hasn't grown at all. Then the second year it's going to start growing a little bit. Then the third year it's going to go crazy, right? So I don't know. The fact that I got such big ones, I think it's going to show up as an espalier sooner rather than later, but I'm still expecting this to take about two years to look how I want it to look, right? For the star jasmine because of that sleep creep leap. Honeysuckle will grow a little bit faster, but then of course you have to 
deal with the upkeep of the honeysuckle. So I have four of them right there. Let me show you the little map that I mapped out. So here's my little map that I drew up. Each square is, equates to one foot. So it's a 23 foot long span here and it's about eight and a half feet tall. And I drew it out this time because I wanted it to look a certain way. And this is how I wanted it to look. And you can see I kind of pushed it over to the side or pushed it over that way a little bit because I wanted to make sure there was enough room for the hose link. And then I pushed it over to the left a little bit just because I wanted to center it. You don't have to do this. You know, um, I've never actually drawn it out like this before, but I'm kind of glad I did because then I could count how many of the eye hooks I need and I know the exact distance um, for where I have to screw my holes. So this kind of just made it a little bit easy. I could have done bigger diamonds and taken out this and just had really big diamonds, but I, I really like how this way looks. I think it looks really pretty and I think it's gonna look really pretty with the jasmine. So this is how I like to do my espalier. There are like more advanced ways to do it with more equipment to make sure that the wire is nice and taut. But I don't really care about that because the plant is going to be hanging on the wire anyway. So eventually you're not even going to see it. That's, that's purely my opinion, right? Then I was also looking on Amazon and Amazon recommended to me this espalier kit. I don't know if it works, but it seemed really, really cool, especially if you were doing it like on a fence or something. I will link it down below, but I just thought that that was really neat. But this is how I usually do it. Okay, so I've already showed you this. I've already measured, and then I have, of course, a measuring tape, right? And then I have a Sharpie where I'm gonna put that on the wall just so I know where to screw. Jason got this. Jason got this today, or for me, because he thinks that it's gonna help get everything straight we'll we'll see <laughs> we'll see how it works i mean it, it looks cool right um i don't know if we're gonna be able to see it with the daylight but we're gonna we're gonna try this out it was just another toy he wanted then so that's step one step two is drilling and this probably takes the longest so you have to have a drill so i'm doing stucco right um and the this would kind of be the same a little bit different if you were doing wood you have to have a drill and you have to have a drill bit and you want to drill a pilot hole into that if you're doing wood you just drill the pilot hole the size you need to put these eye hooks in these are a little bit shorter than i wanted but this is all they had so you know it's it's fine it'll work fine um but these are the things that i like to use because i'm using stucco I have to use an anchor right there. Um, works perfectly well. There's not gonna be too much weight hanging on these guys. So I'm not too worried about it. I, actually, I'm not worried about it at all. Honestly, I think that this is gonna be perfect. So all I'm gonna do is every spot where I've marked because I've measured, I'm going to drill a hole with a masonry tool bit. I'm gonna stick one of these anchors in and then I'm gonna screw this in by hand. Um, and then I, I'll use um, like a screwdriver to help help screw these in so that I don't get blisters on my hand because I've done that before. So then once you have all of your hooks in, your eye hooks in, then you move on to wire. And I like this kind of wire. It works well. This is four strand 20 gauge. I think that's what they say. This, this is just the, the size that I like. I think it works well for outside. I get this at uh, Home Depot, but I think you can get it off Amazon. And then I have these wire cutters right here and I use these. I always wear gloves, like big thick gloves because it will poke you. Um, and I do, I just kind of loop it around one of these eyes, eye hooks and then wrap it back on itself. I'll show you all when I'm doing it. Like I said, there are other ways to do this that's a little bit more advanced and it involves more hardware and um, more equipment and I just don't do it that way. This is this is like the easy DIY way to do it. Um, then of course the fourth step is planting your plants and I like to plant my plant. Well I think we all should plant our plants. Oh my weeds just poked a hole in the paper. <laughs> so I'm gonna plant my plants at the bottom of these diamonds right here. One, two, three, four. And then I'm gonna train the tendrils up and along here. So as they grow, I will come out and I will keep wrapping them around the wire that I've put on my eye hooks. And then, and then that's it. And once it gets all the way up to the top, then you just come out and you prune it to make it look really nice and neat. Um, sometimes if it, like if it's honeysuckle, sometimes you have to cut 
cut it all the way down like a rejuvenation prune and then you kind of start the process all over again it kind of just depends on what type of plant you are using for your espalier okay i'm gonna get started and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put on the screen while i film it i'm gonna say step one measuring step two uh drilling step three wire step four plant so you guys will understand what step i'm on before i get started though i want to show you the deck look at how good this looks it is night and day here's a before shot of the ugly red deck and here's an after shot. It is the same deck. We just painted it. We This is temporary. We are going to put in a new deck eventually, probably within the next two years or something like that, maybe even sooner. Right? But oh my goodness, what a fantastic difference. And it's all dry now. We had Andrew said we had to wait a day uh, before we put our stuff on. So we're going to start later today, I think, if we have time. We do have soccer today. So you all know how soccer soccer is um but we're gonna start moving all of our stuff onto the deck and it's just going to be so pretty it's just i mean it just makes such a big difference and then he's starting on the fence it's so exciting some days i feel like everything's happening really slowly and taking forever like the propane tank that is oh my gosh that's taking forever but then some days it seems like everything's happening really really fast and i feel like i have to do a garden tour update for you almost every day <laughs> so i don't know it's it, things are good things are happening <laughs> so happy with this project. This this made all the difference in the world. I, I I just love doing espaliers because they just, they are the biggest bang for your buck. They are the prettiest installation and they are not even expensive. It is just such a fantastic project to do and it makes such a difference in your home. Look at this. I'm not even done yet. I don't even have the star jasmine done, planted, and I'm so happy with it already. I just love it. So, um, I mean, like I said, four steps, measure, drill, put the wire up, and now I'm on step four, planting. So it's, oh my goodness, it's so easy. Um, it is later in the day now, but I did have to take a long break and 
do pick up and drop off and all that kind of stuff. And I have about an hour left before soccer starts. So I, I mean, I'm going to finish. It's going to be fine. This is, this is a day project. It's not bad at all. Uh, I did have help from Jason, but you know, it's, it's, it's a day project. You guys, you can definitely do this. Um, uh, like I wrote on the screen, Andrew, the painter was here. So I was able to use his uh, paintbrush with the white paint that was out and it makes it look even more professional because it covers up the green anchors. Um, so that's something to think about if you can get a hold of, of a little bit of your house paint. Uh, Star Jasmine is zones 8 through 10. Hardiness zones 8 through 10. But just think about the application of how I'm using Star Jasmine here, right? It is against a wall. It is against a wall. I have a stucco wall, so that's even double. Uh, it is protected by the overhang, um, and it's going to get the reflected heat from the house on the cold nights. So yes, it's hardy zone eight through 10, but you guys in zone seven, I bet you could get away with using Star Jasmine in this application. I bet I mean, easy. I think you could do it, especially if your wall was south facing, right? My goodness, I think it would be completely fine. Anything lower than that, mm, I don't know. You might want to think of looking at something else. And all you have to look at is a vining plant. Just do a plant search and, um, uh, you know, search by vining type of plants, right? And pretty much any one of those vining type of plants you can use as an espalier, right? So just take your pick. And like I said, you just have to think how fast do you want it to form the espalier, and then the inverse of that is the faster it forms the espalier, the more maintenance it's going to be to keep it in line. So it's the only thing you have to think about. It's a personal choice. <laughs> it's what works well for you. There is no right answer. It's just you as a gardener, what you think that you can handle. I knew I could handle the ivy because I am a gardener that goes out into my garden every day, you know, uh, and of course once a week so I can manage that. I can definitely handle this star jasmine. It's going to be a piece of cake. So I'm super excited. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my big auger from Power Planter. I'm going to use that to drill the holes, four holes, use some starter fertilizer. Done. Actually, then un unwind this and wind it on the wire. <laughs> then done. I didn't finish and I have to go to soccer practice right now. Well, first I have to take a shower because I don't want to show up like this. I mean, I am caked in mud. Oh, I'm, I'm so close to being done, but I'm just not done. And I don't want to rush this last part because this is like the beautiful part. So, oh, it is what it is. I'm so sorry I'm not going to finish to show you guys the whole finished project. But I promise the next video on Monday because... It is Thursday night right now, and you all will be seeing this video Friday morning. I'll be I'll be posting it Friday morning. <laughs> I'm just I am just waiting till the last minute. All right, let me show you everything. Oh, I am so tired. My arms are so tired. I can barely hold the phone up. Um, so of course it was my soil. My soil is terrible. Uh, as I was digging the hole, the auger was just immediately a no-go. And so then I had this shovel, which I do have a bigger shovel. I was just trying to rush and not <laughs> not go back to the workshop to get the bigger shovel. That probably wasn't smart. Um, so probably the easiest thing was to moisten it, pre-wet pre it, and then use this big San Angelo bar. I think that this is going to be my buddy <laughs> as I plant in this garden with this compacted, compacted soil. I think it's good soil. I think it just hasn't been 
I don't know. I just, it just, it just hasn't been touched in so long. So you can see, I got all four planted. They all look good. I've got all the wire up. It looks fabulous. And then I started unwinding this one. And these are so, these plants are so mature and, um, like old, I guess. I don't want to say they're old, but they, you know, they've been through the season. So the vines, excuse my super dirty hands, the vines are not very pliable. They are pliable, but they're not super pliable. So it's just taking me a little bit longer to unwind everything. And I want to be, I want to be careful with this. I want to take my time with this and not rush. I also will come down to the bottom and I will prune off some of the vines as well, because you just don't need as bulky of vines. You only need a handful of vines, really just two, honestly, probably a couple more just in case one breaks. Um, but you don't need a ton of them and you don't want it to be big and bulky. So once I get everything all climbing up how I want it to climb, I'll come down and I'll prune some, you know, some of the extra stuff down here, probably like this stuff down here. And that's what I've always done with my other espaliers. So I just have to come through, I have to unwind everything and then I have to twine it all up. Um, I'm probably going to be super sore tomorrow. This soil, this soil is a beast. One good thing are these boots though. Oh my goodness. I have a newfound love for these boots. I always gardened in my Birkenstocks, but there's no way that I could move soil like this and kind of scoop soil with my Birkenstocks. So these boots are fantastic and they're waterproof. So I can just, I can just wash them off. So that's a good thing. I will be wearing these all the time. Anyway, so this is as far as I got. I'm, I'm just, I'm so bummed I didn't finish, but I gotta go to soccer. Priorities, right? <laughs> so um, it's so funny because I never was into soccer as a kid. I never played soccer. I didn't play, I didn't play soccer at all. So the fact that my, both my girls are like super, super into soccer. They love it. They enjoy it so much um, and they don't want to miss a practice and they don't want to miss a game. And I love that about them. Um, and so I don't want to miss a practice and I don't want to miss a game. So anyway, I gotta, I gotta get cleaned up and go. I hope you enjoyed this video. I, I'm so sorry I didn't finish. I tried so hard. I hope you enjoy this and I hope you have a chance to get in your garden today.